that hurts. So I should cut off. Mm. Where's my phone? That's a good call. In our last video, we introduced the rules of journal entries, the rules of debits and credits. This video, and probably we'll break this video into multiple parts, we're going to explain how to apply those rules. We're going to practice doing journal entries. And I got to tell you, the best way to learn this stuff is just by practicing. So I'm going to walk you through a set of journal entries, but I don't know how much good it's going to do. I think where you'll really learn this is when you practice it on your own, without a video supporting you, without anything except you and a list of transactions. But with that said, let's remember the rules, uh, how assets, liabilities, shareholders equity, revenues, expenses, and dividends are all affected by debits and credits. And let's remember them by practicing them. So, beneath this video, I've provided a link to a problem called Gurjeet's Computer Service. And uh, you can see uh, the problem there in the link. You can download it. You can practice this on your own, or you can work through it along with me. Uh, now, it doesn't work that well to have them all on a page like this for, for the video's purpose. So what I did was I broke it down into one transaction at a time, and we'll, we'll look at that. But let's read through the, the top of the question. It says, Gurjeet's Computer Service Center repairs broken computers and installs antivirus software as a value added service. Kurji K is the shareholder uh, slash operator of the business which started business in May 2012. She wants you to help recording the transactions that occurred in May of 2012 and then there's a big list of transactions and we're just going to worry about part one here. Record the transactions. Give journal entries. So let's get started with the first transaction. That's the May 1st transaction and again I just copied them one at a time uh, so I can take them on in a reasonable fashion here. Uh, and so May 1st it says the shareholder Gurjeet deposited 125 grand into the company bank account in exchange for common shares. So we've got to record a journal entry for that and we're going to record our entry by using this kind of rule set. So the first thing we've got to ask ourselves is what accounts might be involved here? Oh, and before we get to that, I want you to remember, whenever we look at journal entries for a company, we're looking at um, it from the company's perspective. We're not looking at it from the shareholder's perspective. We're not worried about Gurjeet. She's a, almost a separate entity here as far as we're concerned. Legally, we're worried about the company. When I think of a journal entry, I always think, I am the company. So, in this case, I'm the company. What happened to me? Well, Gurjeet put 125 grand into my bank account. So, obviously, money's involved. Whenever money's involved, accounts will debit or credit cash. Money's involved here. We've got to say, okay, well, what happened to the money? Even though it goes in a bank account, we call it cash. So, it says 125 grand into the company's bank account. Our cash, therefore, went up, right? She put 125 grand in her bank account. Our cash went up. Cash is an asset. So, looking over, at the, uh, let me just get my pen tool here, uh, looking over our asset cash went up, I'm going to have to debit cash. Why don't I do that now? I'm going to debit cash. I know my writing's a little bit bad, that's DR. And again, just at the top of your page, we want a debit and a credit with some underlines. So we're going to debit cash. She deposits 125 grand into the company's bank account debit cash for $125,000. Okay, well that's, you know, reasonable. The company got 125 grand in cash, but we're not done a journal entry. Remember, a journal entry has to have at least two pieces, if not more, but at least two. So we gotta think, well, what's the other piece of this puzzle? What's the the other part of this? Uh, the shareholder deposits 125 grand into the company bank account in exchange for common shares. Aha! She didn't give us the 125 grand out of the goodness of her heart. She wanted to buy into the company. She wanted a piece of the pie. 
her equity had to have gone up here, right? Her piece of the company had to have gone up. So Gurjeet's shareholder's equity is going up. We're going to have to credit her shareholder's equity. But just as when we debited cash, we didn't debit assets, right? Assets is far too broad. We debited the specific asset account, which is cash. We're never going to credit shareholders' equity. Like, we'll never credit SE down here. We've got to credit the specific account. And in this case, she got common shares issued to her. We're going to credit common shares. There aren't too many shareholders' equity accounts to really be worried about, and common shares is, is one of the few. So we credit common shares for 125 grand, and we're feeling pretty good. We don't, we haven't dated it yet, so let's date it May 1st. And the other thing we're missing is description. And I'm not going to do descriptions for any of these journal entries for the simple reason that I could simply rewrite this sentence. The shareholder deposited 125 grand into the company bank account in an exchange for common shares. I'm not going to rewrite that sentence, but that's what you could write. The shareholder deposited 125 grand for common shares. There, you've got your description. I'm not going to write those down. Okay, so we've got our journal entry, we've got it dated, we've got a debit, we've got a credit, and well, I have omitted the description. So just know that descriptions are needed, but I'm not going to include them for time purposes. Let's move on to the next uh, example. May 3rd, the company purchased equipment for $2,000 on account. Okay, the company bought some equipment. Let's deal with the equipment first. Uh, I guess I'll ask myself, what is equipment? Is it asset, liability, shareholders equity, revenue expense, or dividend? Now you'll know equipment is an asset. Now I've got to ask myself the second question. Is equipment going up or down here? Equipment is going up. That's an asset. It's going up. Let's debit equipment. So I'm going to debit equipment for two thousand dollars i'm not going to write this on every page but remember it's falling under the drcr headings here i'm not going to write it from now on but just remember that that comes under that heading so i bought some equipment for two thousand dollars um now how did i get the equipment usually if we buy something we use cash and that's what would be my assumption except for these two key words here on account. When I read those words, I say, okay, money wasn't involved. We bought the equipment, we said, send us a bill. So if we buy stuff and we say, hey, send me the bill, uh, cash isn't involved. This represents an account payable. We owe them money, right? We said, give us equipment and send us a bill. That means we owe them. We're going to pay them at a later date. If we owe somebody money, that's a liability. Now, I've got to ask myself, is the liability going up or down? Is my account payable going up or down? And the answer is, well, how much did I owe them on May 2nd? I owe them nothing. How much do I owe them on May 3rd? I owe them $2,000. My liability is going up. I've got to credit my liability. And again, this liability is called accounts payable, which we abbreviate as AP. This is by far my favorite credit to write because you write the word crap all in capital letters, C-R-A-P. Um, so let's credit our account payable by $2,000. Again, we could write a description down here. We should write a date, and the description would be purchased equipment on account. Um, okay, let's move on to our next entry. The company earned revenue of $5,000. It was paid in full. All right, so this company earned some revenues, uh, $5,000 worth, and it was paid in full. It was paid in full, so that means we got cash here, didn't we? Um, okay, so we did some work and we got paid. We got cash. Uh, I generally want to deal with cash first because it's it's very easy to deal with. So if cash is involved, let's deal with cash first. So we were paid in full. We got cash. Cash being, of course, an asset. It going up. Let's debit our cash. So I'm gonna debit cash for five thousand uh, dollars. I'll date it May seventh. Um, now, what's the other half of this? Well, they kind of give tip their hand here. They say they, they earned revenue. This has got to be a revenue situation. We said, whenever we have a revenue, we credit it. Well, you know, even if I didn't know that, I'd say I debited cash. I'm missing a credit. I'm going to have to credit something. Now, 
just as we said we don't debit the word asset or debit the word shareholders equity, we're not going to debit just revenue. We're going to say a specific type of revenue. Gurdjieff's Computers is involved in, with the repair of computers. So I'm going to credit repair revenue. And I'm going to credit it for $5,000. Remembering again, there could be a heading here for debits and credits. Okay, so we've got another good journal entry. Debit cash, credit, repair revenue. Well, let's move on. Our next transaction is May 9th. May 9th, it says the company borrowed $25,000 in the form of a bank loan. The company's intention was to use the money towards the purchase of a new building. Now, this is an important point here. Uh, and kind of a red herring this question throws us. It says the company's intention was to use the money towards the purchase of a new building. Have we purchased a new building? No. Who cares what the company's intention was to do with the money? Let's cross that off the list. Let's just cross it out because I don't care what their intention are. I want to know what the heck actually happened. And we haven't bought a new building, so who cares? The company borrowed 25 grand in the form of a bank loan. All right, so I guess my first question is, is cash involved? And the answer is yes. We borrowed 25 grand in cash. We didn't borrow 25 grand in widgets or anything else. We borrowed 25 grand in cash. Cash is an asset. That asset is going up. Let's debit cash. All right, so we debit cash for 25,000. Next up, we got to say, well, what else is going on here? And of course, the bank loan's the other piece of this. Uh, it says in the form of a bank loan. And we've got to say to ourselves, well, what is a bank loan? A bank loan is a liability. Is our liability going up or down? Well, I owed the bank $0 on May 8th. On May 9th, I owed them $25,000. My liability is going up. According to the rules of debit and credit, I've got a credit bank loan. Because my bank loan is going up. Bank loan. And you might even mix in the word payable just to really cement the fact that we do indeed owe the bank $25,000. Um, so something to keep in mind here uh, is that this is a liability. It's increasing, but I didn't even have to know that. The fact that I got cash right, I said cash is going up, debit cash. Well, therefore, I know I'm missing a credit. So if I was in, in any doubt about what to do with this bank loan payable, whether to debit or credit it, I would go, I am rock solid that I should be debiting cash, therefore I have to credit the next account. And so that's why I like dealing with cash first. It kind of eliminates a few options. So debit cash, credit bank loan payable, let's date this thing, May 9th, and uh, again a description, borrow 25 grand from the bank. I mean, that's, that's a reasonable description. Let's do just a couple more, and then I'll split this video in half, because I, I know I'm going to run out of time. May 10th, the company paid rent of $2,500. All right, so my first question, the one I always am asking now, is, is cash involved? And yeah, when I pay my rent, I pay cash. Even if we write the person a check, that's the same as paying cash. So let's credit cash. Now, when I do debits and credits, I always like the debit to be on top and the credit to be on the bottom. It's not necessary, but it, it looks funny if it's any other way. So I'm going to credit cash knowing that I've left room for a debit above it. So I credit cash, $2,500, leaving myself room to write a debit. Uh, the company paid rent. I've got to say to myself, what is rent? An asset, a liability, shareholders' equity, revenue, expense, or dividend. Uh, later on in the course, we'll learn about prepaids and things like that, but let's throw that out the window. Rent is a cost of doing business. Rent is an expense. It's a cost of, of operating a business. You have to pay rent. You have to rent an office or, or own an office, but anyway, rent is a cost associated with running a business. Rent is an expense, and according to this, expenses get debited. So let's debit rent expense. We're going to debit rent expense for $2,500. In future chapters we'll learn that it's a little bit more complicated than this. There could be prepaids and other weird things going on. But right now we're calling rent an expense. This is May 10th and we're ready to move on. Um, I think I'm going to stop this recording here and split into a second recording. So please click over to the next recording and I'll I'll start it up in a moment.